From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. He went in and said to her, Rejoice, so highly favoured, the Lord is with you. She was deeply troubled by these words and asked herself what this greeting could mean. But the angel said to her, Mary, do not be afraid. You have won God's favor. Listen, you are to conceive and bear a son and you must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will have no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this come about, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the angel answered, and the power of the Most High will come over you with its shadow. And so the child will be holy and will be called Son of God. Know this too. Your kinswoman Elizabeth, as in her old age herself conceived a son, and she whom people called barren, is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible for God. I am the handmaid of the Lord, said Mary. Let what you have said be done to me. And the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy uh, to be together, to uh, share this consolation, because we possess the faith of the living God among us, to share this joy with his heavenly mother. But with it, of course, comes responsibilities. Nazareth, a quiet town. Mary, young lady, known by Few people, few people, and yet she was chosen by God from the beginning to be the mother of his son, Jesus Christ. This risen Jesus, the victorious son of God, what a joy, what a consolation. And so, great event, great preparations to all the centuries, prophets came to foretold the Virgin Mary, the birth of Jesus. And this is the moment. This is the moment. Quiet. Not fuss at all. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to Mary. And the first words, rejoice, rejoice. You are a chosen woman. How can it be possible? How can it be possible that I am going to be the mother of Jesus? I'm a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. She didn't understand. How can she? But she had a deep faith, 
and in that deep faith in the living God, in her master, her created, her creator. She said, yes. Let what you have said be done to me. And from that moment, the rest. But what a challenge. Mary was the mother of Jesus. She was privileged, highly privileged, chosen from the beginning to be the mother of his son. But because she was the mother of Jesus, she had to suffer. And what a suffering. And that's made Mary great in the sight of God. Look and listen. You are going to bear a son. And she knew Joseph. Now tell me, my dear people, how can you tell a man that what you are expecting is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? And at that time, they didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus that taught us about who the Holy Spirit is. What a confusion. We cannot understand the confusion of Mary, the humility, the embarrassment that brought to Joseph. And when Joseph heard, he was obviously, obviously, very confused, not knowing what to do. He had great faith of trust in Mary. And yet, she is with child. Impossible. Impossible. Can we enter the mind of Joseph more in the torment? We can't. But we can see the great anxieties and suffering that Joseph and Mary suffered. And God created this problem. God had to solve this problem. So he sent again the angel in Joseph's dream. Joseph, do not be afraid. Mary is to conceive through the power of the Holy Spirit. Take Mary home. Jesus was born. Another challenge. Another great challenge in the life of Mary and Joseph. What happened? King Harold wanted to kill him. Little baby. So the angel had to intervene again to Joseph. Joseph, leave immediately. Go to Egypt. Because the child is wanted by Harold to kill him. What a journey. Do you know? Do you know? Sinai Desert. The heat. The, 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 the obstacles. Robbers killing for food, for anything. And yet Mary and Joseph had to go this unknown journey with little child. What a heartache. Yes, she was very privileged, chosen by God. And yet she was chosen because she was strong. She endured these events with trust and confidence in her maker. Yes, she said, yes to this trouble that Harold caused to Joseph and to her. So they left. That heat crossing with a little bit of a donkey. Crossing, it, took, it, it, takes, it takes months. And they had to stay two years. Angel again intervened Joseph Back home now, because Harold is dead. They came back, brought Jesus. Jesus prepared for his ministry. And he came out to preach the good news of salvation. 
very different from the previous uh, preachers. His was a language of love, of mercy, of forgiveness, of tolerance. How important it is to follow the teaching of Pope Francis. And now, thank God, he is introducing us to the year of mercy. Because the vocation of Jesus is a vocation of respect, of kindness, of healing, of accepting, never condemning, but reaching out. And because he reached out, he turned sinners into saints. Look at Mary of Magdala, St. Matthew, others. He didn't condemn. He touched the heart. Even the woman at the well, what we call the Samaritan woman, she had five men already. But Jesus invited her to drink his water that leads to eternal life. And he revealed her past life. She went back to tell the people in the town, came back rejoicing. He converted her. She was the first evangelizer, the woman. That woman at the well. She had a bad life, and yet Jesus saw something good in her, reached her, gave his light of faith in her, and she converted. And she converted many people. I am saying this because Jesus went out to do just exactly this. What happened? What happened from the people that they should know better? Priests and scribes of the temple turned very, very vicious, negative against the pastoral work of Jesus and caused him so many problems. And although the gospel doesn't relate, but between the lies we can see, how many times were those people knocking on the door of Mary? Take care of your son. He is causing us a lot of problem. Can you not see? Call him. Hold him in here. Don't you think? Don't you think? About the wounds of mother, mother, chosen mother, special mother. People coming to her, telling about her son, the mission of her son because he was reaching out to people, mixing with people that he should not mix with. What a great lesson for us. What a great, great lesson for each one of us. And then, after suffering all that torment in Jesus' ministry, where did we find her? Jesus was treated at the end like a criminal. Execution. We are so familiar, thank God, with the cross. But do we think deeply? This is the Son of God from heaven. Treated like a criminal. The execution on the cross, historians say, was the worst execution that ever was. Because the person died so slowly and so full of pain. Where was Mary? Where was his mother? Under the cross, suffering with him. And when the, the soldier pressed his side, Mary... Of course, the heart of the sorrow of this loving mother, our heavenly mother. Yes, she was chosen, favorite one. But she had to endure, endure all her life because she was the mother of Jesus. And so while we journey through this life, and as a priest, I found that many, even good people, because of the suffering that they encountered, they lose the light 
because of suffering. And they turn to God and blame God because they can't understand that when we hold firm to the faith, close to Jesus, when we make home for Jesus and Mary, we can turn this situation, difficult situation into life, something beautiful for us, like Christ on the cross, redeeming love, redeeming suffering. Easy to say, but difficult in practice. Tell a mother who lost a child, the person who died suddenly from cancer, whatever, whatever is the situation, person humiliated on a paper, there are so many things that can put a man in trial. But Mary teaches us that those really are the moments that we can, we can show God who we are. As Mary did under the cross. And then I experience too from good people that I encountered in my ministry, that endured great suffering in their lives, and they came out shining. And they were able to give advice to people, to be the strength to other people who are enduring suffering. And this is the, the joy that come out of this. But we must understand it. That's why Jesus said, Take up the cross daily. To be a faithful Christian, we must die to self. My dear Mary and Joseph, is it easy for me to say that, for you to say that, is it? It is, but difficult, difficult in practice. Because human beings as we are, our body never gets used to die to self. It's always a torment. It's always a struggle. That's how we are as human beings. That's how we are as human beings. There is the struggle. But in this struggle, we find the light, the strength of the risen Christ among us. So we must learn that what we take with us out of this life are the things that we give away. Did you understand that? If you don't, I say it again. The things that we take with us after this journey of life are the things that we give away. The rest we accumulate and we suffocate our being and our freedom is not free to implement the will of God. Because Mary followed Christ, God's will. We are called to follow the same, God's will, not our will. And we are so nicely happy thing that at times we think that we are doing God's will, jolly where we are doing our will. So this is the moment. It's a month of Mary. A lovely month, month of flowers, month of life, spring, heavenly mother, she is our mother, she is our comforter, she is a tower of strength. I have a mother still, thank God, she is still alive, 94, living far, far, far away. She still tell me what to do and not to do and not to do, not to forget to eat. So we always finish, what did I cook? What did she cook? She loves me. I love her. But as you know, we have another mother. My mother on earth is very limited in her power to help me, isn't it? But my heavenly mother, she is with us. She is there, as she was at Pentecost, 
for those who have the privilege to go to the daily mass, we are following that lovely readings of the Acts of the Apostles, how much they changed the apostles after Pentecost. They went out to preach the gospel without fear. They imprisoned men, they came out, they went on to preach, they again imprisoned them. <coughs> they come out again preaching the good news of eternal life. What a great change. It's because of the faith. My Lord and my God, the words of Thomas. Jesus said to him, Thomas, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. And Jesus is alive just the same, 2,000 years after. It's the same. In fact, we are more privileged because we have so many, so many information for those who want to have it in our hands. The gospel, we have it. Jesus, the reason Jesus is with us. He is here. Why are we so fearful? God loved the world so much. Do you believe that? The conversation of Nicodemus, we had it two weeks ago. Nicodemus was not a disciple of Jesus. He was one of the good Jewish religious who used to, uh, to uh, listen to Jesus. And he used to go in a quiet moment in the evening. And Jesus said to him, God loved this world so much. You know, God creator, can you count the stars? We can't. The galaxies that God created, billions and billions and billions and billions, and yet, and yet, this world, this little world, God Almighty sent the only Son to be among us. Would you believe it? Would you believe it? He is in love with me, and he is in love with you. You know that, do you? You are not asleep, is it? <laughs> Otherwise, I put my, my mouth in the microphone to wake you all up. <laughs> of course, you are not asleep. He is in love with me. He is in love with you. God Almighty. He knows us. We are dear to him. We are dear to him. He said that so. Oh, if I go long, do let me know, will you, to stop. <laughs> you see, sometimes we act like the apostles. In the beginning of the ministry, Jesus sent some of the apostles. He said to them, go to the village and begin to preach yourself. Go, go, you must be trained. So they went. What happened? They came back to Jesus. Oh, Master, oh, Master, nobody wanted to listen to us. Oh, they were so downhearted. And Jesus said to them, oh, stop it. Stop it. Did I not tell you to have faith? Another time you will be successful. And then he said to them, don't you know that God the Father, my Father, your Father, he knows even when a sparrow falls to the ground. Let alone your good self. Why are, why are you losing the energy to preach the gospel? And sometimes we do run away from our responsibilities. I wonder if any of you came here to run away from your responsibilities. <laughs> I mean, uh, shoot me three times and don't send me to a big supermarket to buy, to buy. Mother says you have to do it. So you send your husband and your wife to do it so that you will have a nice time in here. Not a bad idea. There are thousands of things that we need to be careful. That our life, we are privileged, very privileged to possess this faith. We are privileged too to be together for the mass and under the protection of our Heavenly Mother. Very privileged. But with it, comes responsibilities. As a mother, 
as a father, you cannot run away from responsibilities, like it or not, as a priest. But of course, it's so easy to be lazy. I mean, we're lazy. And then, come husband or your wife, have you cooked anything? Oh, oh no, oh, I have been very busy. Busy with what? Sitting down watching the television. And then asking the husband or wife to open the tin from the cupboard? That's the evening mean. Forget it. Forget it. And we are so, so good to defend our being. Better wake up. Better wake up. Challenge our being. Grow up. I mean, that is an example. There's so many, so many examples in our life. So many examples in our life. We run away. We shred away from responsibilities. Going to a cozy thing so that, and thinking that we are doing God's will. I am not going to go on and on. <laughs> Otherwise, this person on my right hand is going to shoot me. <laughs> that will not do. I finish by saying, when I entered the sacristy and met Deacon James over there, where is James? Has he dropped dead before his ordination? <laughs> oh, I thought, I wondered what happened to you. I always feel a great joy when I meet a seminarian preaching for the priesthood, preparing himself. And of course, James, James is going to be ordained this month. Love the priest. Jesus loved the apostles. They were human. They were weak. But because of the Holy Spirit, they were strong. Pray for your priest daily so that we will have the courage and the strength to preach Jesus crucified and there is in Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Oh, God, it's there.